Starting with heartbreaking revelations that American veterans were neglected and mistreated at VA hospitals across this country, forcing the president's VA secretary, Eric Shinseki, to resign. Within days, a new national outcry after five top, top Taliban leaders are traded to terrorists in exchange for a captive American soldier, a soldier who's suspected of desertion. President Obama then stages a controversial celebration of sorts in the White House Rose Garden with the soldier's parents quoting from the Quran and appearing to empathize with the Taliban cause. Next, a chilling update from the southern border. More than 140,000 unaccompanied children expect to flood the country by next year, a crisis the administration may have set in motion itself and now seems challenged to stop or even slow. And then infuriating new developments in the IRS investigation. The tax agency that asks Americans to retain tax information for years, reportedly losing, claiming to lose, thousands of critical emails from the woman at the center of the IRS scandal and several other employees. Now today, news that the total output of U.S. economy actually shrank in the first months of this year. The weakest, the weakest numbers and these numbers, this sort of shrink, shrinking number, not seen since the depths of the recession. While we also see early signs of new fallout from the crisis in Iraq, where the terrorists have seized one third of the country, including some oil resources, raising fears of crippled oil supplies, invoking memories of shortages and the lost long gas lines of the 1970s. These events giving new voice to old warnings from the president's critics. Charles Krauthammer was among them saying that the crises we see today are part and parcel of President Obama's long-term plan to downsize America. There's a big difference between decline as a condition and decline as a choice. What we have with Obama is a president choosing decline. Mark Thiessen is the former chief speechwriter to President George W. Bush and a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. And Joe Trippi is a veteran Democratic presidential campaign manager and a Fox News contributor. Uh, thank you guys both for being here. Mark, let me start with Thanks, you. Of those, of those items we just ticked off, and, you know, we could go on, but those were the highlights or the lowlights, depending on how you want to, you know, characterize it. Which one do you, jumps out at you the most as the most disturbing? Well, they're all disturbing, which is part of the problem. I mean, take, take that 2.9% uh, GDP decline figure you had. That is the worst decline, in non, not during a recession, of GDP in, in one single quarter since they started keeping statistics in 1949. So, that, I mean, this is seriously bad economic news, and it comes on top of the VA. It comes on top of the border crisis. It comes on top of the implosion of Iraq. It comes on top of the, uh, of, of the epidemic of hard drive malfunctions at the IRS. And that's just the last month before that you had the Syria debacle, where we didn't enforce our red line, we, uh, where you had oh, the Obamacare rollout. There is just crisis upon crisis upon crisis. And look, when your foreign policy is imploding, when your economic policy is imploding, when your immigration policy is imploding, when your veterans policy imploding, Imploding, your presidency is imploding. Joe, is this presidency imploding? We did, we did, we did a, we took a look at this about a week or a week and a half ago, and asked whether the the presidency was imploding with all of these scandals and the the polls coming back in terms of people's respect for the president, their their trust in government, their their belief that he can lead, all at record low numbers. Well, the presidency may not be imploding, but his favorability and approval numbers sure are, and that that creates all kinds of problems in terms of getting things done. Uh, not not just that, but has huge implications for the November 14th election. I know these are all serious problems, but in the end, from a practical matter, he wants to hold on to the U.S. Senate, and that as these problems pile up and his numbers go down, that makes November holding on to the Senate uh, a tougher and tougher problem for him, which then does cause the last two years of his presidency uh, being, being a problem if the Republicans have both houses. So yeah, these number, all these things matter, but the practical implication is, uh, is right now that uh, it's empowering uh, a, a, a positive Republican outcome in November and one that's not going to look good for the Democrats. And then, of course, that goes back to the presidency for the last the last two years. It's not imploded yet, but his numbers going down 
that causes a big problem. You know, Mark, we, we referenced the Carter administration and those long gas lines and the general sense of malaise that President Carter himself referred to when he was talking to Americans. And there are many Americans out there who now feel as a result of all we're seeing that America itself is in decline. Yeah, I don't think America is in decline. I think Charles is right when he says there's nothing wrong with America, but there's something wrong with our president. I mean, all of these crises that we've talked about are self-inflicted wounds. Every president faces crises. I mean, I worked for George W. Bush. I, I, I understand what crises are like. Yeah. And, you know, he faced the worst terrorist attack in American history, the worst storm in American history, the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. But the difference is, is these are all self-inflicted. Iraq is a self-inflicted wound. The VA scandal, self-inflicted. IRS, self-inflicted. The border, self-inflicted. It. These are things that he's doing. So these are conscious choices that the president is making. Changed at the very end. The Reagan defense increase actually started under Jimmy Carter, where there's no sign that Barack Obama sees the disastrous policies are wreaking and is changing course in any way. Joe, do you believe that, th that all we're seeing here is a result of President Obama's policies, or is it the result of something else? And, and you know, when it's one scandal or two scandals, even three scandals, you can sort of say, well, maybe these are like ginned up, right, by the president's opponents. But there, there are so many, and certainly well, the GDP shrinking is not something ginned up by anybody's opponents. No, but it's very similar to the end of of the Bush presidency. I'm not trying to, you know, come back at Mark, but I mean, look, Iraq, the economy, all of it was unraveling at, at in the last uh, few years of the Bush presidency. His his favorable and and uh, approval ratings were were in the tank, I think just about exactly where Obama's are right now. It's not out of the ordinary, it, it, you know, this isn't a unique situation. I would have been saying the same, making the same case against Bush that Mark's making against Obama right now. But let me interrupt you and ask you this, Joe. Let me ask you yeah, this, sure. because, uh, 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 okay, fine on the, on the overall poll numbers, but what we've seen recently with, you know, Sebelius basically forced out, Shinseki basically forced out, um, all this controversy about what's happened in Iraq and that country now completely spiraling out of control and the president's team saying they were caught off guard. They were caught off guard. And indeed, in January, the president called this group JV. Here we are in June, and Iraq is all but lost. That's yeah, not to mention what's happening with the IRS targeting conservative groups, the lack of faith the American public have in Eric Holder, who completely misled the public right. by saying he's never heard of the criminal prosecution of a journalist. Meantime, he was alleging that James Rosen was a criminal co-conspirator in a complaint that we then got our hands on. I mean, the list goes on and on. Why is it that every main figure in the administration seems seems to be in the headlines and in connection with another scandal well I mean one of the things is I think this administration has gone beyond looking at the polls or even frankly caring about them at this point you are talking about the end of a presidency where they're looking they're looking at at Iraq and all these questions not at where I am where they are in the poll numbers but how do they deal with the situation with it? Well, I, mean, I get look, that, I, but that's the, not my question. Right. My question is, are these, has it, is it just reaching critical masses? Is this something about President Obama? Why are there 10 to 12 scandals now engulfing this administration? Are well, they I mean, all made up by the, by the opponents? No, I, well, look, I don't know that they're all made up by the opponents, but certainly having the opposition being as strong and, and coming after the administration as strong as they have uh, does, does matter. Uh, re, you know, you know, look, you know, Bush had five million emails get disappear on them in the middle of uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, legal uh, questions there. I'm yeah. not, and this isn't tit for tat, they did it too. What I'm trying to say we're is trying a to lot context, of these scandals yeah. that were talked about uh, um, have gone on before. They are hitting this administration in consistent, like bam, bam, mm -hmm. bam, one mm -hmm. or the other, which, which like the bigger problem fight. is he it's can't like a prize get off. fight and the president yeah, and is going get down. Off the Mark, my last right. question for you. The polls show that the American public believe this president is disengaged. He's just no longer into being president. Unfortunately, he, he has to continue doing it. I mean, it's like, unfortunately for him, if he is disengaged, I mean, you know, yeah. you can't really be disengaged as the president. You're not really allowed. No, you're not allowed, and especially when the world is is on fire as it is right now. And look, I'm, I'm not going to get into a tit with, for tat with Joe, but there's a big difference between, uh, outside the fact that there weren't 12 scandals in the end of the Bush administration, is that in Iraq, Bush looked at Iraq, saw it was a disaster, and changed course. He changed the strategy and did the surge. Where is the sign that Barack Obama is changing course on any of these things? He's yeah. just he's just staying the course as as it goes, and the scandals are getting worse. All right, guys, good to see you. Thanks, Megan.
Good well, to be we with have you, breaking Megan. news from Iraq tonight where we are seeing the rise of the world's first terrorist state and getting reports this group could soon have the run of the biggest military base in the Middle East. Colonel Ralph Peters is next on the big issue he thinks most folks are missing here. Wait till you hear what he has to say. Plus, dramatic new twists in the IRS investigation with new reports about the targeting of a top Republican senator by Lois Lerner. And the IRS itself now admitting that it broke the law for what appeared to be political purposes. So if it's true and it applies to a taxpayer, it ought to apply to the IRS as well. Agreed? Is this a trial? Is this a jury? Is that what you're... I said uh, administrative, to? civil, or criminal. If you want to if you want to go down that road, I'm happy to go down it I'll, with you, Commissioner. Just... Oh, heartburn. Did someone say burn? Try Alka-Seltzer Relief Chews. They work just as fast and are proven to taste better than Tom's Smoothie's assorted fruit. Mmm, amazing. Yeah.